الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد رحبة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته حياكم الله May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all with ikhlas, with thabat. Ala sunnah Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ahabatifillah, one of the things I want to remind myself and my brothers and sisters about is, is obviously the point of uh, practicing your deen. That knowledge, Islamic knowledge, is not based upon just compiling uh, text. That's a part of the knowledge that is very important to memorize and to to have uh, to have ilm, you know, to memorize knowledge. But what is going to codify that knowledge and keep it with you is, of course, practicing the ilm. That's that ilm and nafia, that beneficial knowledge. The Prophet ﷺ said, "Man yada the law will and yafakul fi din." Whenever law wants good for a person, he gives them understanding of the religion. That fiqh fi deen is that you're practicing it. That's the fiqh fi deen. The fiqh fi deen is not that you just uh, you memorize and you find your uh, you, you you just sit with the ulama, but you're you're not practicing. You're not really truly gaining that knowledge. But if you want to have the fiqh. As the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in had as a path and a minhaj and a methodology, which is the madhab of Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah, is that you're practicing that knowledge, you're implementing that knowledge in your life. And that is the, the one who Allah, you know, that's the true showing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants good for you, that He gives you that fiqh fi deen, because that fiqh fi deen is that you're practicing it. Have a huwa. The Prophet وسلم, also said, Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam That Man salaka Tariqan Yal talmasuhu Bihi ilman Sahhalallahu Lahu Bihi Tariqan ala jannah That whoever Traverses the path Of knowledge Allah will make easy for him the path to paradise. Right now we're in need of an easy path. I don't see one. And so we see that by traversing that steep path of ilm, that that is the means to paradise. And that's why the Salaf used to say, Talib al ilm, Talib al Jannah. Seeking knowledge is seeking paradise. Again, that requires ikhlas. That requires that your heart, that you're doing it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to come closer to Allah, to lift the ignorance from yourself, to raise yourself up, raise your community and your family uh, up from the depths of ignorance. And that you are doing that to come closer to Allah, that you're doing that seeking the knowledge in order to practice and implement. That's what we're talking about. We're talking about implementing that ilm. That's the ilm yuntifabi. That's the knowledge which is uh, ilm and nafi. It's the knowledge that benefits a person when they die. If they leave behind beneficial knowledge that, that people benefited from. They benefited from the ilm of that scholar. وَهَذَا النِّعْمَ عَظِيمًا That's something khair azim to leave behind. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all to be able to leave behind that uh, you know, that kind of khair. And so, habatifillah, that's that ilm and nafia. The salaf, some of the classical scholars, they used to say uh, about, uh, you know, hadith, some of the hadith uh, collectors, they would say, Ida uh, sama'ta hadith if you hear a hadith, then practice it. You know, if you hear of a hadith, then now it's up to you to practice that hadith. 
So why I'm reminded of that, or what has reminded me of some of these narrations, is again what I mentioned prior of this uh, a janaza that was very impactful that affected me quite a bit and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy upon our young brother Sultan Allah and may Allah make it easy upon his family Amin Ya Rabbil Alameen and uh, what reminds reminded me because during that Janaza, as I mentioned, you know, several people, well, nine people from the, uh, you know, to the end of the night, they accepted shahada, you know, they took their shahada, they embraced Islam, came to uh, nur, you know, min bulamat al nur, you know, from darkness to light, where had the ni'mah min ni'amillah, and That was very powerful. And the one who was giving the da'wah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward him and bless him with ikhlas, with the bat. Ala sunnah to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was a, a younger brother who may not have had a lot of knowledge, but he had the passion and the zeal and the love of Islam. And so what I was trying to, or what I'm trying to, bring all this together is that sometimes a person can have a lot of love and zeal for Islam and perhaps in that combines in a person they may have even sins as we all have sins but sometimes a person may have outward sins but yet they truly love Allah wa Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam as was mentioned in a hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam that I'm sure many of us are familiar with that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam you know there was a sahabi radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een who was uh you know, had the fitna of, uh, of, of of being an alcoholic, you know, being uh, getting drunk. Radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And with that being the case, you know, some of the Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'een, they, you know, they thought that this was something, you know, severe. I mean, it's a, a major sin to, obviously, to drink alcohol. And this Sahabi had been brought to the Prophet Wasallam on more than one occasion. And so, when they were giving him uh, the hadood, you know, a part of the punishment in Islam for that drunkenness, you know, some of the Sahaba, they wanted to curse him. And, you know, because for them that was so severe, you know, they had, you know, al-wala wal bara they loved for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they detested things Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala detested. So... They were, you know, you know, wanted to curse him. Radiallahu ta'ala an. So, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam forbade them. And he says, Lian, because he loves Allah and his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So what this shows us is sometimes, you know, we look to the outward appearance to make judgments about people, no doubt. Because that's Ahl Sunnah, Dahi. We can only judge by what's apparent to us. But however, we don't know the hearts. We don't know the hearts. So we may see someone doing a sin. And they, that is a, a sign of weaky man. And that is a sign of nuks or shortcomings in their love for Allah and His Messenger because they're not following Allah or Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam by doing that sin. But it shows us that although 
this is the case that a person can still love Allah and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam that although they may do sins they still have a love for Allah and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that it is not that longer that they are removed totally from the love of Allah and his messenger but rather this is a naqs this is a shortcoming that's what sins are they are shortcomings and they yunqus your iman they 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 uh, make your iman uh, go down and the reason i mention that is because again i've met many people especially from uh the revert communities and i've seen it over the years many who just they just love allah and his messenger they don't really care too much about anything else when it comes to their deen they love Allah and his messenger they were really brought from the darkness to the light and they really appreciate that and there are many people who are just striving to do the best they can to practice their Islam and that love and that zeal can go so far when it's accompanied with ilm, when it's accompanied with knowledge. And that's going back to those athar of the Salaf. And of course, how many ayat and, and, and ahadith of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam illustrate for us the importance of practicing. And one of the things that some of the scholars, they make istilal of Surah Al-Asr, you know, where Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala says, وَالْعَسَرْ إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَفِي خُسْرِ إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمَلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala says, in Kitab Al-Kareem, وَالْعَسَرْ He swears by the time, shows us how important time is. Wal-asr, in uh, wal-asr, in the khusr. Kind is in uh, a loss. Illa ladina amanu, except those who believe, except those who believe. So that means you have to have iman. Illa ladina amanu, and what? Wa amanu salihat, and they do righteous deeds. Wa amanu salihat, wa tawassu bil haq, and they call to the truth. What to sabr, and they invite, and they are patient. You know, they're patient, and they invite towards patience. This is really uh, the shan of ahli iman. This is the affair of ahli iman wa sunnah, and why we need to strive our best to gain Islamic knowledge, but practice that knowledge again. It's practicing what we do know. If you only know a few ayat, but you are practicing it. It's better than the one who's memorized the Quran and a hadith and the people praise him or her but they cannot pray Fajr on time. Never or rarely. Or they cannot do some basic acts of ibadah. But yet the one who only knows Surah Al-Asr and Surah Al-Ikhlas and Surah Al-Fatiha they pray Qiyam Al-Layl. So it shows us the importance of implementing the knowledge that we do have. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal, the Almighty, to accept our good and forgive our evil and to bless us with ikhlas, with thabat. Ala sunnah al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.